Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Grace to All. I'm so glad you could join us and you are in for a real treat today. I have my friend Q with us. Uh, you, if you Google him, you'll find Fred Portelbaum and he's got a long resume of basketball coaching experience. It, it encompasses more than 25 years in Division I college ranks. He's currently on the coaching staff of <clears throat> my alma mater, the University of Kansas. He's had coaching stops at North Carolina, St. John's and Notre Dame. And since he's been at Kansas, Q has been a part of the big uh, six Big 12 regular season championships, two Big 12 tournament titles, three NCAA championship elite eights, and a final four in 2018. And during his time here, he's had the honor to see more than 15 Jayhawks move on to the NBA, including Andrew Wiggins, Joel Embiid, the number one in three selections in the 2014 draft, and Josh Jackson, uh, the number four pick in 2017. Q played his college basketball at Fordham. He was a four-year letter winner from 85 to 89. He helped the Rams to an NIT appearance in 88, co-captain, a senior citizen, graduated with a degree in communication, and he's a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. He and his wife, Christy, have two sons, Trey, who's a guard at St. Francis, Brooklyn, and Mason, a forward at Kennesaw State, who I got to follow their careers here in Lawrence, where we both live uh, in the paper, and wonderful, well, I haven't met them, but wonderful guys and wonderful careers. And Fred's teamed up with his close friend and inspirational author, coach, trainer, and top podcaster, Chris Worth to co-author book two in the Positivity Tribe series, which is coming out this fall. We're going to talk about that, but gosh, I, I, it takes a long time to just to credit you with all your stuff. Uh, hello, Q, and welcome to be with us. Oh, Paul, thanks so much for having me. I just listening to your uh, thoughtful um, uh, resume of my my career I think what it says is I've been doing this for a pretty long time so I'm kind of telling you my age here <laughs> but thrilled to be here I'm so grateful uh, to share to listen to learn from you and again uh, with everything that I've uh, been able to experience it always goes back to better serve our student athletes so again thanks so much for having me well thank you and I you know if we're going to talk about age um, <laughs> the year that you were uh, uh, captain of your college basketball team, well, no, the year you were born, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was the director of the uh, basketball band at KU that year. I remained good friends with Ted Owens and uh, Jojo White, Walt Wesley, Al Lopes, Bud Stallworth. Uh, we're in school when I was. And so let, let's talk about age here. Let's go way back. <laughs> you're, you're just a young pup. <laughs> we'll talk about that offline. How about that? <laughs> yeah, 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 that'll be good. Well, I so appreciate you taking the time to be with me. I, you've been, uh, well, you're starting the season. You've just finished boot camp when we're recording this. But um, talk about, if you would, the concept of team impact. You that that you brought uh, to the University of Kansas when you came, and what's that all about? Well, it's, it's a phenomenal organization. It's a nonprofit organization out of the Northeast Boston. Team Impact aligns children, high school uh, students that have some type of chronic illness, some type of uh, medical challenge that more than likely, I would say, a high percentage of them probably will not be able to participate in a sport. And we aligned with Team Impact two years ago, and it's been a great experience, not only for uh, our young man, JP, who, if you follow uh, KU Hoops, you'll see that he participated uh, yesterday in our final day of boot camp, but just to see the impact uh, that has had on each and every student athlete that has touched uh, JP's lives. So, We've been very fortunate to do things outside of basketball, so to speak, to enrich the lives of so many people and to better serve our student athletes. So Team Impact is, is family. JP is a, is a family member of ours and he participates in a lot of events and a lot of functions that we do with our basketball team. Oh, that's wonderful. I, and I, I, I saw uh, the video that you posted with the guys just bumping him, uh, and uh, but what a wonderful thing. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of our friend Brian Haney and his uh, uh, 
uh, round ball classic in, in the summer uh, where he helps uh, families and kids with cancer. But you guys do so much and uh, with the uh, Special Olympics type things, uh, you know, with the, just so impressed. And what a great platform you have to, to help and inspire people. Well, well, you hit you hit it right on the head. You know, and this is obviously falls back on you know Coach Self and his understanding that we are here. Why we got into coaching is to impact the lives of others. Obviously, basketball is a, a bright byproduct of that. Uh, kids love to play, but we also understand that the game is eventually going to to end for them at some point in their lives. They don't think it will. So <laughs> doing things like that in the community. Uh, is extremely important. Our culture is our lifestyle here. So the understanding of, you know, responsibility and accountability and showing up and, and empowering others and setting good examples, those things are a byproduct or prerequisites to the success that we've had here on the court. But most importantly, we hope and we work towards our student athletes being for us, being better husbands, better fathers and better contributors to this exciting. Uh, and that, that's so wonderful. It, the, the character of the young men that, uh, that you guys uh, have, it, it, it shines through uh, not only on the court, but in the things that uh, here in Lawrence, uh, where we both live, you know, when, when we see the guys out, uh, you know, downtown having lunch somewhere or uh, different places, uh, uh they're just good guys they're the kind of guys that you you know you you want your daughters to uh go out with that you want your sons to hang out with and uh, uh what a great asset i mean and i know that uh unfortunately that doesn't happen on every campus but i'm so grateful that it does here well that's you know in recruiting paul obviously you know everyone is looking for talent you know the ability to to be successful on the court. But I tell you what's a close second for us is character. You know, we we make sure that we dot I's and cross T's. We talk to uh, the managers of their high school team. We talk to the assistant coaches. We talk to the guidance counselors. We talk to other uh, members of their circle just to kind of get a, a better feel of that student athlete, that prospect. Because as you know, playing in a place like Kansas, not only do you uh, have a reputation you know, on the court, but you also have a reputation on campus, you know, in our community uh, and in some aspect, you know, to our world. So it's important for us to also recruit character. Yeah, well, and you have. Uh, a few years before you, I was uh, blessed to be friends with Christian Moody. Uh, he and my son were the same age. And, uh, and then he worked for me for a year before he went to med school uh, in a nonprofit we have here called the uh, Heartland Medical Clinic. And boy, Christian, uh, he, you know, he's just exemplifies the kind, of, the kind of young men that you guys coach and what an asset he is to his community now as an orthopedic surgeon and uh, guys go into different professions, but, uh, uh, College basketball will always be a big part of his life and the rest of them. Well, that's, again, that's the the byproduct of, of, of coach self. And, you know, while our, our student athletes are here, they are challenged. Uh, the expectations are extremely high, not only as a basketball player, but as a person and as a student. And sometimes they don't truly understand or they don't grasp all the things at that particular moment or maybe not even that particular year. But as they go on and they continue to do positive things throughout their lives, I think they reflect back and say, you know what, boot camp really helped me get through a, get through a situation just because of the, the teamwork and the camaraderie, but also there was a challenge in front of me that I had to uh, uphold and I had to go through some bumps, you know, along the way, but I came through it. So again, I think some of the things that we do here with our basketball players can translate into other areas of their lives. Well, it, it certainly does. And tell me about uh, getting up early in the morning and posting notes on the telephone pole down at the end of your block. Well, it started actually at the beginning of the, the pandemic. There were stay-at-home orders pretty much throughout the course of our country. And I teamed up with a dear friend of mine who was actually a co-author of my book, uh, The Positivity Strap in the Locker Room, Chris Worth. And we got together along with about maybe 
10 other guys. And we asked ourselves, we challenged ourselves, how can we impact our homes? How can we impact our communities with the stay home orders? You know, there are possibilities. What are they? And I just happened to be looking outside and I noticed that people who were just walking for fresh air, uh, exercise, you know, walking their dog, all those different things. And they kept walking up past this, this pole there. And we started these positivity notes and I, I actually have one right here. And we said, well, what if we just start maybe writing, you know, some messages or even words to keep people encouraged, to keep them, you know, uh, you know, we're going to get out of this hope, you know, and those things. So I just kind of started just writing notes and it became a every Monday deal. And believe Paul, this will be this past Monday was the 78th straight Monday of the positivity poll. So really? 78 Mondays of the positivity poll. And it's wow. kind of hit. I'll be in the airport. It could be in New York or, or Arizona. And maybe they see the Jayhawk on my shirt. Now we have something with some apparel. And all of a sudden I just hear, hey, keep the positivity poll going, keep it going. So I think it's not only impact our community. I think it's starting to impact those around the world. And that was the goal or, or the focus to provide hope for, for others. Boy, that's wonderful. And I, I would bet that you you ran across people around town who you hadn't met before who say, hey, I read this and, and, and it uh, helped me get my day started. No, no question. And that's the gratifying uh, part of it that we want to share. We want to give back. We want to add value. That's why we're here. That's where that, that's in my mind, uh, the most important thing of why we're here to, to serve others, to impact others, to encourage others. And this small little note right here has really helped someone because a life touches a life, touches a life, touches a life with just a piece of paper and write a few words down. I got to write that down myself. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Wow. All right. Well, the, the uh, Positivity Tribe in the locker room uh, is coming out. Uh, we're, we're recording this uh, earlier than people will listen to it. But in a few weeks from now, when it comes out, probably will coincide with when the book comes out. Tell us about what the, this book is all about. Well, the Positivity uh, Tribe in the locker room uh, really resonates to uh, my experience, been in college basketball, I've been coaching overall for just about 30 years. And Chris Worth uh, has also coached, you know, at the collegiate level, the AAU level. So we just put together, you know, and just had major discussions just about our experiences, you know, highs and lows, you know, winning seasons, losing seasons, injuries, uh, good chemistry, bad. We, we, we just kind of put everything on the table. And we just started kind of discussing that, you know, we all go through challenging times. We all go through difficult times, whether it be individually and collectively, and how we were able to come through, how we were able to persevere, what were the, the prerequisites that you need in order to, you know, move forward. So we just had an idea and we just put it on paper and we just started to write and, and bring stories together and, and memories of, of certain experience that we both had as athletes as, as, well as, as well as coaches. So we're really excited. I think this book can, can touch uh, teams uh, at any level, businesses, organizations, or even someone who's just looking to get into coaching about how to develop a culture. And we've come up with this acronym of culture of, you know, we had C could be for communication or, or commitment. U is for uh, us, for understanding. Uh, L is for love. T is for trust. U is for us, uh, where I'm at now. R, R is for responsibility. You know, E is for energy, enthusiasm. And if you can provide those in your, in, your, in your day, in your job, in your family, in your business, in your team, your organization, and you're intentional about it, Paul, I think you're in the right direction of having a pretty, pretty good culture. So those are the things we just kind of 
just discussed and talked and we were able to put it on paper. So I think it's going to be an enjoyable read. It's a fun read. It's a short read. And hopefully that it's impactful to so many people out there. Well, I'm sure it will be. And I'm looking forward to, to getting my copy and seeing how it blesses people. You know, it, it's interesting that the, uh, uh, we all see things through the lens that we're involved in. And, and uh, what I try to do uh, is encourage people uh, spiritually, not from a religious standpoint, not, not from a, uh, that, but just spiritually. And some of the same words that we use all the time that you used uh, there, uh, you know, love, uh, us, trust. Uh, I mean, those things are, uh, they cross all boundaries, you know, whether, whether, uh, you know, whether it's basketball or music or the classroom or the corporate world or whatever. And uh, uh, we're, we're all connected with each other. We're all one. Uh, uh, we're all part of this together. There's, uh, I, I really teach and just hammer home all the time. There's no us and them. I mean, it, it's all us. I mean, we're, you know, we're all, the, we're all the human race. We're all together. We're all made by the same creator. And yeah, we, we may be on different teams on the basketball court or different businesses or whatever, but uh, we're all connected. And uh, it's, it's love uh, that connects us all. And in, in, uh, I'll throw another cue at you in, in quantum science today, which is, uh, uh, goes right along with quantum spirituality. Quantum, so they used to think in Newtonian science that there was, there was nothing in between people. Like you're there, I'm here, there's nothing in between. Well, they know now from quantum science, but yeah, there's something in between. And uh, they call that gray matter or different things, but I, I've come to see that that something in between all of us is love. It's, it's divine love that holds us all together. That's where we come from. That's what connects us. And when we see that, then there's no longer separation and division and exclusion and inclusion. Uh, uh, we're all in this together. And boy, that takes all the pressure off and uh, uh, just makes it so much more fun to be able to see people through that lens and help and encourage people, no matter what their backgrounds there are, even if they come from the University of Missouri, uh, you know, <laughs> which, which I can say because I grew up in Missouri. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we have so much more in common uh, than we don't have. And that us and love and trust, boy, those are great words. Aren't they? Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we, 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 again, I think it's about just be, being intentional about the words because they are great words. They are powerful words. They are unmaterialistic words they're free I, I like using that word a lot they're free you know we're yeah. gifts they're gifts and it's yeah. how we and how we use those gifts um, are just super super important and myself and chris put the groundwork in this book about how important those words are words words are way more important than uh than most people think, as you know, and, and especially the words we speak to ourselves and that we speak to our spouse and to our kids. I mean, words have, uh, words have, uh, we had a neighbor one time, new people moved in next door to us and uh, we went over to meet him and we're out in the driveway and I'm talking with the, the man and his wife, and my wife Kitsy's there and, and their 16 year old son comes outside and, and the dad says, well, there's, there's our son, whatever his name is, and he causes us a lot of trouble. And I thought, I bet he does with you talking like that. And what a, what a difference, I mean, just in words and saying, you know, there's our son who we love and we're proud of. Uh, and uh, how, how did you come by this pond? Did you come by this your parents, grandparents, people bringing you up, what uh, gave you your positive attitude? You know, that's a great question. When I, I had a chance to, I had a chance to reflect on that question. Someone asked me probably about less than a month ago. And I believe the positivity or just my, the mindset about hope comes from my mother. I'll date back to 1979. I believe it was February of 79. I was probably 11 years old at the time. 
and my mother was diagnosed with, with breast cancer. And at the time it was known as the big C back in the late seventies. Uh, my mother had a mastectomy and I recall, I recall her staples started from her shoulder and they just kind of went across and that kind of angle here across the chest and obviously they removed her breast. And, you know, at that time, I don't know what the percentages are at that time about, you know, women, um, you know, surviving uh, cancer in particular, uh, breast cancer time, but her outlook, her, her, her approach every single day was just amazing, amazing. I mean, and that just resonated with me that she was tough enough and just believed in something bigger than her and herself and her situation that she was going to come out of it. And she has, she's, you know, she's 77 now with still unbelievable energy, unbelievable gratitude. And I shared that story that someone had asked me, Paul, about where I got my uh, sense of positivity, where it started from. And it started back from my mother. Wow, what a, what a great story. What, uh, and, and, and what a, you know, one person's attitude made such a difference in your life. And now you've been able to pass that on to hundreds of young men, and I'm sure women too, and, and they're passing it on to other people too, this, this big ripple effect, and uh, it all goes back to your mom. Yes, Pretty it cool. does. Wow, gosh, that's really cool. I, I, I would bet that, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I bet you've had young men that you've coached uh, who you now see uh, having the same positive attitude that you do and impacting other people. And uh, assuming that's true, what, what's, it, what's the feeling like for you to see this being carried on through the next generation? Oh, it's, it's, it, it is, it's gratifying because again, I remember I didn't get into the business to, to be wealthy, to be rich, to win championships, get in the business because I wanted to add value and impact the lives of others. So when I speak with a former midshipman at the Naval Academy, and he tells me uh, how his son is doing. Uh, in basketball, hey coach, you have any few pointers? I remember you used to tell us to do this all the time or that, or I go on social media and I see Sean May, who I recruited in North Carolina, yeah. and he's doing such a great, great job there. And I just say, let him know how proud I am of him as a coach, but as a mentor, as a father. And he refers back to me on the, on the in social media, he goes, hey, I learned from the best. That, that's, that's what it's all about, serving and adding values to other and just how it just circles back. And did you mentioned the word earlier, Paul, that we're all connected. And I'm sure Sean's gonna do the same things with the young man that he's um, working with on a daily basis. Wow. The, uh, the yeah. coaching, coaching tradition that uh, came from Kansas and then through North Carolina, and through the players there, you know, gosh, it goes back uh, all the way to, to Dean Smith, of course, but, uh, um, and then to hear names like you just mentioned uh, with Sean and, and then, you know, they're, they're just names to a lot of us and we enjoy seeing them, seeing them play basketball. But it, it's, so, uh, uh, it's so gratifying to me to hear you talk about their character and how they're, uh, how they're helping uh, other young people uh, but what a legacy that's, uh, I mean, the national championships are nice, but, uh, <laughs> the, the character that goes on for generation after generation, that, uh, that, that's really something, isn't it? It sure is. That, that's, that's legacy. Yeah. Obviously, leave, leave, leave a legacy. We, obviously we, we're competitive and we want to win every game and the goal is to win, you know, win a national championship or your conference championship, whatever that may be. And we also know too that those moments fade, their memories. Yeah. What I mentioned before, of, of, you know, character, being a good person, integrity, uh, doing things the right way, setting great examples, you know, being a leader, being selfless, those things stay with you to the end of time. Oh, they do. 
you, you talked about uh, getting together, uh, interviewing. I don't think you used that word, but uh, high school coaches, AAU coaches, counselors, principals, and stuff like that to uh, do your due diligence on a, a character of a young man. Uh, I, I, I can just, I can see that Coach Self did that with you. And he picked just the kind of guy he was looking for with the kind of character that he wanted. And uh, who knows who he interviewed or who he talked to, but uh, uh, it would seem to me like he, he recruited well in that case. Hey, Paul, actually, actually, it was actually the opposite in this term, in the sense of this. I met Coach Self through, through Norm Roberts, worked with Norm and I both from New York and worked with Norm in St. John's. So I got a chance to know Coach a little bit. But when I came out on my, on my interview, I brought my boys out for camp. The question was that I heard back from Coach, not to me, but to others like, hey, is this dude always like this? Is this dude always positive? No, there's no way. There's something not right with this guy. I'm, there's, I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sold. That's what I'm not sold yet. And, Norman, <laughs> and I remember Norman and KT, you know, they go, no, no, no. He's always like this. This is who he is. And, you know, I, and obviously, you know, coach of staff for the, uh, this started my ninth year and uh, we have a great group, great personalities on our staff. We work extremely well together. We're family, we're brothers. And uh, I'm just so grateful that he's allowed me to share uh, who I am and my gifts, you know, to his basketball program. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate both of you guys. And again, those three words come up, uh, you know, love and us and trust. Um, uh, and they, they come right through, uh, through the screen and interviewing you, Q. And I, I so appreciate you taking the time to do this. And uh, before we wrap up, tell people uh, how they can uh, connect with you. I, I know, uh, <clears throat> obviously, you don't hand out your uh, phone number to everybody on the street, uh, but how they can, uh, uh, <clears throat> through your book and through social media and stuff like that, how can they connect with you and, and tell us again the name of the book and, and how they can get it? I sure will. Again, it's the Positivity Tribe in the Locker Room. You can hopefully, I believe next week we'll go live, but you can uh, go on my social media, which is uh, QFIT50. That's QFIT50 or PositivityTribe.com or lastly, you can go on Amazon. So we should be going live here hopefully by midweek. Uh, Chris Worth, who you mentioned, my, my, my dear friend, co-author, his IG is at No Quit Living, and that's at No Quit Living. So there'll be a lot of information out there on our book. We're excited about it. I actually don't have a copy in my hand right now. I'm waiting for the mailman to come and drop it off, but, but it's going to be an exciting read, a fun time. And I'm just really thankful that I was able to team up with Chris to put something down to impact. And again, just to add value to so many people out there. Well, great. Yeah. Is this your first book? This is my first book. And actually I was not interested in being a part of the, the project. Chris actually had to twist my arm and, and, and challenge me, but thought that all well, my experiences as a coach, as a leader, as a mentor, there were a lot of nuggets out there that can really help so many people. And that's what kind of started to sway and trying to turn the corner. I'm so happy he did that. Well, I am too. Again, I look forward to uh, getting the book. And uh, if you'll stay on the line for a minute when we finish, we'll chat just for a minute. But I, I, I want to thank you again so much. Uh, he goes by Q because it's easy. Uh, but Fred Quarterbaum, uh, one of the coaches at the KU uh, basketball program and author now of the Positivity Tribe in the Locker Room. Thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thank you for taking so much time uh, to have me. Appreciate you. Thank you. You as well. And thanks, everybody, for being with us for another episode of Grace to All with Paul Gray. See you next time.